can get started. Oh, I'm so excited to be here with you guys. It's the first webinar of the year and it's such an important topic and I think like the topic that we chose, so this event is proudly sponsored by Study New South Wales, who's doing an amazing job in supporting international students to find the purpose, succeed in Australia and around the world and achieve everything at the full potential. And I think a topic like this, the one that we're going to be talking about, which is how to find your life purpose and transform it into a business. As you guys know, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. Like I started my first business that is registered that I can show on photos at the age of nine. But since forever, I've always been very curious in transforming problems into businesses. And the thing is, the whole journey of finding a life purpose is not once in your life. Often we go through cycles and we reconnect with our business, reconnect with opportunities. So we're always evolving. So everything that I'm going to be sharing with you guys, I've worked with some of the best coaches in the world to connect myself to my life purpose, to my talents, to create positive impact. But please keep in mind that this is a forever ongoing journey. But the more you take time to connect with yourself, the more you're going to be able to create this impact. So today's session, um, for those of you that are logging in, hello, we are doing it on Zoom. And for everybody that's logging in through Facebook, a big hug as well. So um, at the end of today's session, I'll be taking questions and I'll stay back to help you guys achieve your goals. If you want a copy of the slides, just send me an email. I'm putting my email at the end or just contact me on Instagram, LinkedIn, you've got my name here. And also I've built a little toolkit with the top 10 steps for you to start a business. So if anyone wants access to that, just send me a message and then I'll share that with you guys as well. It's really cool, like really useful steps. And just so you guys know, everything we always teach is abs like uses only free tools. So if I refer to anything, you go online and everything is free. Everything that we do at Academy Entrepreneurs, because when you're building a business, we need to use your focus on growing the business, growing your cash flow and so forth. So all of the tools that we'll be sharing in this and the other um, 22 events that we're doing for Study New South Wales, they all use free tools. So you guys as students can use all of them straight away. So please connect with us with Study New South Wales, Academy of Entrepreneurs and myself on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, WhatsApp, we're everywhere. So please connect with us and don't connect us today. If in a few weeks you've got a question, contact me. Some of you guys have written me messages and I'll connect you to my network and help you focus, overcome the challenges and shine and succeed more and more every day. So yes, yeah, so Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, we're everywhere. So thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. Happy New Year. Amazing to see you guys. And just the fact that you guys are here already makes you guys legends because... This is a huge step that you're taking in just making time for you to connect your life purpose and turn it into a business that will create a positive impact. And I absolutely love this quote. And it says, the two most important days of our life are the day, first, the day that we're born in, and second, the day we find our why. Why were we born? What is our purpose? What we're going to achieve? So, and that's what we're going to be learning today. So very, very, very important. The only way you're going to be able to achieve your goals and live truly towards your life purpose is if you boss your future. You need to take action. Everything I'm teaching you guys today will give you immense impact if you take action. If you just listen, nothing will happen in your life. And remember to breathe because as entrepreneurs, as leaders that are wanting to achieve things, you need to action, but you also need to take time to breathe, check in with yourself and go, how am I progressing? Am I progressing in the right direction? Have I slept enough? Am I getting the good results that I'm hoping for? So remember to breathe along the way. And another quote that I love, it says, take action because an inch a moment will bring you closer to your goal than a mile of intention. So please, 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 every day, every day when I wake up, I'm grateful for three things and I set up three goals. And I action them straight away. Sometimes I don't even get out of bed. I've got my laptop or my phone and I straight away do it. So take action and it's guaranteed you'll get results. And it doesn't need to be huge action. A baby step, if you make a mistake, you can shift. If you're not getting the results that you want, you can adapt. But please take action every single day. So let's get started. First step is for you to understand what is your reason for being? Why is it that you exist? This is the easiest but one of the most meaningful activities that you will do in your life. It's called Ikigai, and it's a very traditional activity done in Japan. It has existed for hundreds of years. 
So this is step one for you to find your life purpose, but turn that into a business. So you need to think about, and it needs to be interconnected. What is it that the world needs that you love doing, that you're very good at, and you can be paid for? So let's say I love yoga. I'm really good at yoga. I am so good at it that I can teach people and people will pay me to teach you yoga. And the world needs yoga because we want to be healthy, flexible, calmer, more focused, more creative. You might be a photographer. You love taking photos. You're really good at taking, I don't know, wedding photos, or birthday photos. People will pay you because at a wedding and a birthday, we need a photographer and the world needs it. So when we are finding our life purpose, when we're building a business, they need to interconnect these four no matter what. Until these four aren't connected, you're not ready to start a business. So starting a business is not about going cryptocurrency, NFT, 3D printers, artificial intelligence. If you don't love and if you're not great at it and you can't get paid and you won't even be able to solve the problem of the world needing it. If you love it and you're great at it, but you can't monetize, you're not a business. If the world needs and you're great at it, but you don't love people, it's not sticky enough for people to believe in you. So these four are super important. So it takes time today to connect all four of them. What is it, the easiest way is to start on this one. What is it that you love doing? You love connecting people, surfing, playing soccer, trading, learning, dancing, coding. What is it that you love doing? That you're very, very, very good at that one thing that you love doing. That you're so good that it's easy for someone to pay you for it. And believe it or not, people pay us for things that we do with no effort. That's the easiest, quickest way for you to succeed and be happy and that the world needs. So if you love playing soccer, you're great at it, you can get paid for it, teach in your street, speak to the local moms and teach the kids or go to, I don't know, Pitt Street and speak to the corporate world and start a soccer team for people when they leave the office. They can play, but these four things need to be connected. And that automatically kind of answers everything we're going to be talking about today, which is finding a life purpose and turning it into your business. So business is not just about opportunity. It's not about making money. It's not about hiring staff. It's not about the freedom. Everyone says, oh, open a business. I'm really busy and I'm going to open a business so I can be less busy. Forget it. I've been an entrepreneur my whole life and I am absolutely addicted to my businesses. Absolutely. I think about them. I dream about them. I go for a run when I'm driving. So make sure that you're doing something that is interconnected because the light will shine in your own soul into the world. Your customers, your investors, stakeholders, government, everybody will help you succeed. And these four need to be extremely connected. So pick one that targets all of these and that's your business idea right here in the middle. And it's connecting your mission, your passion, your profession, and your vocation. Next. Next, very, very, very important. And this is about entrepreneurship. It's about making the world a better place. But in this point, please be a tiny bit selfish and understand what is the lifestyle that you want to have? Who are you? And what is the lifestyle that will be the dream lifestyle? Do you want to work crazy hours to make crazy money to buy a private plane? Do you want to have a little local business that pays you enough to buy a comfortable home that allows you to surf in the morning and hang out with friends in the afternoon at a bar? There's nothing right or wrong with one or the other. And in our life, we will have different lifestyles. If you're studying towards a master's, if you've got a new full-time job, if you are having your first kid, all of that will affect your lifestyle. But what is it that you want to do? Do you want to wake up super early? Do you want to work long hours? Do you want to have a side business? For example, a lot of the Instagram influencers, they love fashion and they love taking photos. So it's natural for them to do it well and people will give them free stuff for them to chuck it on Instagram. And that's their ikigai and it becomes a business. So you need to see what is the lifestyle. And I'll share with you guys my lifestyle. I was born overseas. I have lived in so many countries and I love traveling, love talking to people. 
I love challenges. I love trying new food, connecting food, culture, and business and opportunities together. What have I done my whole life? I have had businesses that connect culture and community at a global level. So since forever, I've been building businesses that make a world a better place, but make me happy with my lifestyle and allows me to go for a run for every hour, every one hour of the day I go for a run, allows me to do yoga, allows me to jump on a plane. For me, the more I jump on a plane, the more sales I get. So pre-COVID, I used to do three countries a week. I loved it, but some people would go, are you mental? Why are you doing that to your body? What are you doing with your life? Slow down. And I'd be like, you have no idea how happy I am. Because I would volunteer at the charities. I'd visit one orphanage. I'd run in a different city every day. I'd meet people, build courses to take people out of poverty by shaping them into successful entrepreneurs. It ticked all of the boxes of the things that I love. Culture, empowerment, connectivity, travel. So what is it? And my lifestyle for me was my favorite thing ever. COVID started, I continue doing the same thing on Zoom, but instead of seeing three countries a week, I can now see 10 countries a day. So I've maintained my lifestyle because I know how happy it makes that every hour I'm speaking to a different country and creating positive impact. Is it mental? Absolutely. Would my mom like this lifestyle? Absolutely not. Would a photographer that takes photos of nature like my lifestyle? Absolutely not. But you need to understand, what is your ikigai? What is it? Let's go back to that activity that we were looking at. What is it that the world needs that you're great at, that you can get paid for, any love, but it's in alignment with your lifestyle? So have that in consideration. Because a lot of people go, I want to build a unicorn, but I want to finish work at five, have my dinner early and watch Netflix. You're never going to build a billion dollar business. Even if you're the luckiest person in the world and you get a lot of investment, you won't build a unicorn by chilling out for half of the day. So take that in mind. And you don't need to travel the world and build a startup to make billions of dollars. You can make billions of dollars in Australia, but it's the hours you're going to put into it. And sometimes it's fine building a business that just makes you $10,000 a week. And you work two days of the week and the rest you can look after your garden and, I don't know, hang out with your dogs. Everything is fine. But you need to think, what is the lifestyle that I want? And you guys are students. You're, you've got that. We have the freedom as students. You're in the beginning of your career. So now is the time to go, what is it that I like? I love traveling. I love shopping. I love exercising. I love working from cafes. I love cooking. I love dancing doesn't matter but make sure that the things that make your soul shine that make you happy lifestyle wise have a space in the lifestyle that you're going to have as an entrepreneur so please take that in mind this is the only bit that I recommend you guys to be selfish with is understand what is the lifestyle because there's no point if you really like I don't know playing soccer and then suddenly you're working crazy hours in the next five years you don't kick a soccer ball you're not going to be happy about it so take that in consideration. Then let's talk about your entrepreneurial journey. Every entrepreneur has the mission to change the world and create a positive impact. Entrepreneurship is about problem solving. So why are you here today? Today, right now, I googled this today, 2nd of February of 2022. Currently, there are 2,755 billionaires in the world. Yet, one in 10 people around the world live right now with less than a dollar 90 a day. Dollar 90 doesn't even pay for 15 minutes of parking, depending on where you are in Sydney. This is that a dollar ninety pays for the food, accommodation, electricity, and whatever else that they need to survive for the next day. And sometimes they don't survive. So you, while you're figuring out your life purpose, your lifestyle, you also need to see what problem am I solving and how am I going to reshape society to create a positive impact? And we can't wait for change. We need to create it today 
And this is why I'm here with you guys. This is why I say reach out to me on Instagram, LinkedIn, because I will help you achieve your goals because we as accountants exist to help you create change to solve all of these problems. And how do we solve these problems? The first place for inspiration is to check out the United Nations UN SDGs, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So the United Nations, a few years ago, identified 70 problems that we have to solve as a global community to promote prosperity while protecting the environment. Because there's no point of us building houses for everybody and polluting the environment or sending water to community that needs, but in plastic bottles that are going to end up in the river. So it's about sustainability, prosperity, but also protecting the environment. They come together. Everything is interconnected. We're interconnected today. The environment, the economy, society is interconnected. What the world needs is connected to what we can offer, that we can get paid for, and is what we love. Everything is interconnected. And these are the goals. So please, if you have time today, just Google United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. You can watch a video on YouTube or just literally scroll through the website and you will see poverty. It is such a huge problem and it's increased so much in the last few years. Zero hunger. We're so lucky to have a fridge full of food that has different flavors and cuisines and ingredients as we need them. Good health and well-being from mental health to health to preventive health. Like there's so many things. Quality education. I was speaking to a group of girls in Peru a few months ago and they were saying that 50% of the classes didn't have access to electricity 50% of the time. It means that it's not even about providing education. They don't have electricity. They don't have internet. They don't have equipment. So there's so many problems. Gender equality. The gap is getting smaller, but it's still absolutely unacceptable, the gap. Clean water and sanitation. Water sanitation is one of the biggest causes of death. I'm working at the moment um, with Jack, the founder of Power Water, and he was telling me that 75% of Kenya in Africa doesn't have piped water. And Kenya, out of most countries in Africa, is quite okay. 75% of the country doesn't have piped water. More people have a mobile phone than access to water. So when I see all of this as a social impact entrepreneur, it gives me energy to get out of bed and continue fighting and helping you guys figure out solutions for these problems. Affordable energy, decent work, economic growth, all of these problems, the 17 problems, and you can build a business that tackles many of them. So Academy of Entrepreneurs, we're an education business, but we tackle all of them because we build ending poverty hackathons. We're reorganizing the food supply chain through our courses by teaching people how to, like the agriculture industry, on how to automate and optimize. So have a look at all of these and link it back to based on your skill. So for example, maybe you're really good at baking chocolate cake. For every chocolate cake that you bake, you send a bag of flour to Africa and you're helping people that are in poverty get something to eat. So you don't need to be building thousands of water tanks in Africa, but you can start today doing a fundraiser and build one tank with friends in alignment to your goals that make you happy, your lifestyle and the core focus of your business. So entrepreneurship is about problem solving. And once you connect that problem to something bigger than you can achieve in this lifetime, you will always be resilient, persistent, and you will succeed. This is why they say 96% of businesses fail because people started a business just for starting without attending webinars like today, without studying a few entrepreneurship courses, without knowing why they started. Because when you know why you started, you link to your purpose and you solve a problem, nothing can stop you. I remember day one of lockdown, it was announced that 30% of businesses were going to disappear. I looked at the stats and I'm like, I'm not going to be in the 30%. And we have grown more than ever. So entrepreneurship is about action and problem solving 24 hours. Public holiday, Sunday night, Monday morning, you're all day problem solving. 
And this is a huge mistake that people make. They often think short term on the problem. So I'll give you guys a case study. There was this group of American kids that went to, the, um, to Africa and they saw kids with really broken shoes in Africa, dirty, broken shoes. So what did they do? They went back to the state and did this beautiful fundraiser, raised hundreds of thousands of dollars and ordered from China the cheapest shoes they could find amongst the budget and made sure that every single kid had a new shoe. What happened? The local shoemakers all went bankrupt because they didn't have anyone to sell the shoe because the whole town had free shoes. A few months later, these plastic cheap shoes that were unfortunately ordered from not a good quality factory over in China disappeared and the whole town did not have shoes, shoemakers, and they started getting diseases on the feet and the whole town became sick from it. So when we are building a business, we need to think of the whole ecosystem. Are we supporting our staff? What, how can we create positive impact, not in just giving the shoe or building the water tank, but paying good wages, looking after your mental health, your team's health, looking after the environment, so consider that because sometimes when you're solving a problem really quickly without thinking the side effect, you're creating more damage than actually getting things effectively done. So how do we start? Which is always a question I get asked. Like, Paolo, okay, how do I start? Always, always, always think big, but start small. So if you're going to think you're going to launch a new mobile company, think Visualize yourself as building the biggest, fastest growing cell phone company in the world, but start small. If you want to end world hunger, think of impacting 7.6 billion people in the world so everybody has a healthy meal every time of the day when they are hungry. But start small. And I'll give you guys an example. One of my favorite leaders in the world is Professor Mohammed Yunus. He had this idea when Bangladesh, his original country, was the third poorest country in the world. A huge percentage of people were so poor that they didn't know how to read and write. And when they were born, they lived so far from the city that they weren't registered, which meant that they didn't exist in society. So they couldn't borrow money. They couldn't get a job because they weren't registered. They, were unre they didn't have a name. They didn't have an ID. And this was the reality in his country. So what did he do? He started a bank with $27. And I think all of us today connecting have $27 in our bank account. So he started a bank with $27 and went to a group of women and said, I will my, create a microloan. I will lend you. I'm not giving you. I'm lending you $27. And I want to help you, group of women, take yourselves out of poverty. What could you do? Buy chickens and sell the egg. And then buy more chickens. Buy seeds, grow and sell. How can you take a group of women, a group, not individual, with $27 out of poverty? He tested it out, saw how they supported each other, saw the difficulties, and now he has helped more than 7 million people around the world out of poverty. Because from 27, people started donating money to his fund and he would then lend it. Some people would lend the money for him to re-lend and then afterwards he would give it back. So if Professor Eunice in 1983, before we were even using the internet, was able to create a bank for $27, Imagine you guys today that have access to internet that gives you access to unlimited knowledge because either the answers are on Google or in books or you contact someone on LinkedIn and they will mentor you. You have the power of changing the world, but you need to action, think big and start small and align it to your life purpose. So let's continue. This is an example. Homeless is something that sadly has grown a lot over the last like, definitely two years. So let's say you want to help every homeless in the world get a home. You're not going to be able to help them all straight away. Even if I was to give you $1 trillion, you wouldn't be able to do it straight away. 
but you can today set up a strategy to help three homeless in your city dress to get a job to pass the interview to save to rent the first house after many months of living in the street have foods once you've taken three homeless out of the streets you will then record all of your learnings and i can guarantee you're going to make more mistakes than succeed at it but you've learned and then you just go three people you can talk to them on a daily basis you could almost live with them 30 people it's a whole different logic you might do a paper with classes you might go to a local cafe when they're closing at maybe four o'clock say can i borrow your chairs and you run a little class with them you might want to speak to 10 companies and build a partnership so that they can hire these people that you've just trained with a new skill once you figure out how to take 30 people from the streets and help them have a decent house with decent food and a decent job from those learnings you then can look at how are you going to help 300 people maybe you're going to do a partnership with a telephone company and you give each one of them a mobile and you send them whatsapp messages with tips you call them you video call them and you can help 300 people in different suburbs of sydney and then onwards until you impact and we have no more homelessness in the world so this is how you do you connect what is it the world needs that you're great at that you can get paid for and you really enjoy doing link it to a problem that is bigger than life think big and start as small as possible. I remember when I was building academic spinners, I said, I want to impact every student in the world. And people used to laugh at me. And that gave me more motivation to work towards my goal. Has it been easy? No. Have I worked 21 hours, seven days a week for many, many, many months? But nothing can stop me. Nothing makes me happier than every day knowing that I'm getting better. I make little mistakes every day, but I progress a lot every day guys i build a campus business people and collaborating and making sure that everyone wins along the way so everything is possible if you've got an internet connection and i think that's like a huge mistake that people make when they're building a business they start too big and think too small so they go i want to open a bakery but i only want to have one bakery and they rent the bakery before they even have any clients. So if you're going to start a bakery, start an Instagram page. Bake for your friends and get them to post reviews. Go on Facebook Marketplace and Instagram and get people to buy. They'll pay you before you even bake the croissants. Then with that, measure the data, grow your Instagram, your Facebook, your TikTok. Then you could go to a local cafe that's not using the kitchen every day and you do a partnership with them. Just go, can I use your kitchen for free? And I'll give you 15% of what I make every day. Then with that money, you can then not open one, but you can open centers and you can turn into a franchise and be located in every city around the world. But don't straight away go, I'm going to build a bakery and rent a place for millions of dollars, get the machine without even knowing what to do. Think big. Think you're going to open the greatest bakery in the world and start small by posting stuff on social media, by selling before you even have the product ready. So can you see the strategy? And it's so much easier and fulfilling because every day you're progressing. You've got your first 10 followers. The next week, you've got three customers. The following three months, you've got a kitchen that you're renting off someone else when they're not using because no one uses the kitchen 24 hours. Maybe you're gonna have to wake up at 3 a.m. and you're gonna use the kitchen from three till eight before they start organizing the kitchen for lunchtime. We've all done it as entrepreneurs. You have to adapt to be able to survive. But think big and start small. Next thing is to know, how's my business gonna work? And this is when we talk about the Canvas business model. So what is the problem that you're solving? What is your solution? How are you gonna measure it? What makes it unique? And this is right, why right at the beginning we were talking about doing what you love that you're good at. Because when you do what you love, you'll stand out and that will be a unique value proposition in many cases. What is your unfair advantage? Maybe you are Swedish and you know all of the Swedes. 
So automatically when you launch a Swedish dessert shop, that's your fair advantage because you have been socializing for the last two years living in Sydney. Who are the customers that you're going to have? You're going to have ongoing customers that buy from you every week. Are you going to put them in a subscription model that everybody gets croissants or they do yoga class with you every week? What is the different level? So for example, when you get in a plane, the plane will take you from Sydney to Paris, but you can go in different airlines. So say you are Qantas, you can fly economy, premium economy, business of first class. So these are different customers that have different requirements. What are the channels you're gonna use? How much does it cost? And how will you make money? So for example, making money, you can make money in many ways. Let's go back to the bakery. I can have a subscription where I get fresh croissants prepaid. And every Sunday morning, I wake up with a basket of very fresh French croissants that your grandmother taught you how to make when you were living in France. You could have a cake business that does really fancy cakes and they're themed according to international students' nationalities. So where are you gonna position? Who's your target audience and how can you make money from different audiences in different ways? advertising, commission, subscription, crowdfunding. These are all different ways of making money. And I'll be talking to you guys about this in some other webinars that we're doing for Study New South Wales. And what do successful entrepreneurs, what kind of style do they have that we can learn from? Successful entrepreneurs work in teams. They understand that the only way they're going to succeed is by working with teams. So it's very important for you to inspire your team and everyone be a part of your growth and your movement because together you're going to get further faster. If you go by yourself, you might feel like you're going fast in the beginning, but then you get stuck because you can't do everything. Engage with the network. They say that 78% of business success comes from the network. How many people have you networked with today? How many of us are connected today? Today here on the chat, Post your Instagram, your LinkedIn, and add each other, support each other. Erica will launch her business, and then she can send a message, hey, guys, thanks, love, thanks for the follow on the 2nd of February. Now I've just launched my business. Can everyone give me a like and let me know if you've got any friends that want to buy my, I don't know, bracelets. Great. Support each other, guys. But learn from each other. Because all of us need a logo design. All of us need an accountant. All of us need a lawyer. All of us need to design an Instagram page and a website and you don't have to start from scratch because if Erica calls me and just go Paula I need someone to code an app it takes me two seconds you have three names for her right now and I can send it to her on a whatsapp and I'll share with her people that I've used and were really good and I've also had really bad services but when you get a referral they're very good always because someone's used the service before and it worked for them so build your network to motivate to push you forward open doors but also open connections in a way they can collaborate or buy quality services that you need for your business. Another super important point is connect with your community. So as entrepreneurs, when we begin, we're often serving our customers, but with time, we're too busy to talk to our customers. And that's when your business will crash because you can't go, I'm opening orphanages in Nepal. If you're not flying to Nepal or at least speaking to them on Zoom and understand you really need an orphanage. Is there a broken building that we can fix? What is it that that community needs solve? So you need to connect with the community. Listen to what the, if someone writes you on Instagram, Facebook, reply back and ask them, thanks for following me. How did you find out about us? Why did you decide to buy our products? Why did you donate? Maybe you're building a, a charity. Connect with the community and understand that your community of customers, but also if you're building a social enterprise that you're helping your community, connect with them to understand their needs. And communicate. Communicate through social media, newsletter, maybe build a little Discord, WhatsApp, Telegram group of your ambassadors, your friends, but communicate your progress. Because the more you communicate your progress, the more people will remember you and they'll support you. And this is what we've seen a lot over the last few months. We used to go to the supermarket and shopping centers and buy things. Now we get our masks and we walk to the local shop and we pay more for the products because we want to support the local owner of the fruit shop because they communicated that maybe their fruit is organic and they have five kids 
and they're saving towards building a swimming pool. And you just go, maybe I will buy the fruit from them so I can support the business. So always communicate your progress because people buy your story. Final tip. This is a little secret. And I think it's more of an academy entrepreneur secret. I don't, I've never seen any entrepreneurship school teaching this anywhere around the world. Whatever you do, stay a little crazy. Don't take your personality away. Me, for those of you guys that have seen me face to face, on Instagram, on stage, putting petrol in my car, I am the same everywhere I go. You'll see the same love, the same energy, 24 hours. And that is connected to my passion, to my life purpose. It's who I am. So there's no point of me pretending that I'm really, I don't know, serious to get a government deal. I walk in to government meetings with ambassadors, with presidents, and I hug them. And it's who I am. And that makes me stand out. They will remember me forever because I'm not trying to be everyone else. Because if I try to be like everyone else, I'm just one more in the crowd and I won't stand out. So stay weird and do what you love along the way when you're building your business, having a style. If you've got a specific style of dressing and it fits your lifestyle of your business, keep that style. If you're starting a yoga business, you don't need to wear massive heels to every meeting. Go with your yoga mat. Go with your yoga clothes because you live and breathe yoga. So do what you love and stay a little crazy. And look at some of the top entrepreneurs, musicians, and artists around the world worth billions of dollars. You have to be a little crazy to be able to stand up. And you have to be crazy to believe that you can change the world. And you can change the world. But you need to stay true to your core, to your life purpose. And final reminder that we started. It was the first thing we spoke about. You need to take action. Breathe. Like I honestly need to put a timer on my phone to remind myself to read. And then I check and be like, Paula, how are you feeling? And I'm like, oh my God. Like today it was 2.45 and it was my check-in time. And I just went, oh, I haven't even had breakfast. So I stopped because I checked in. And I'm like, that's why my brain is a bit fizzy. So it's understand like this morning I woke up full of energy. And I just went, okay, I need to do a yoga class before I start to get myself in the flow. So check in with yourself, take action every day and smile along the way. If you win, open a big smile. If you make a little mistake, laugh at your mistakes. I was talking to a very successful award-winning cybersecurity entrepreneur in Canada yesterday. And I was telling Jeff, I'm like, Jeff, no one's made more mistakes than me. And he was just saying, no, Paula, that's me. As entrepreneurs, we laugh of our mistakes all the time. Because that's what makes us a better person every day. We learn from our mistakes. We don't learn from just succeeding. So please join our community. Follow Studying New South Wales. Be inspired by the amazing stories of international students. Join our Academy of Fitness community. We're here to help you guys succeed, shine. And the more you connect your life purpose to a problem to solve it, the more fulfilling your life will be, the more successful, the more profitable, the more everything you'll be able to achieve. So here's my personal email. Please reach out if you need anything. So if you need a copy of today's presentation, send me an email. If you want a copy of the ebook that we created on the top 10 steps for you to start a business, send me an email. If you don't know what you need, send me an email. We can help you guys. This is why we're here. So now, I'll pass over to you guys. I'll answer all questions that you guys have. And thank you so much for joining for our first masterclass, the 22 masterclass that we're doing for studying New South Wales. So let me stop sharing. And now I will take your questions. Erica, Valeria. Valeria, you've got a beautiful way of writing your name. That's so pretty. Nice to meet you. So we've got Betsy that we know very well as well. Ellie, Jessica. So team, Luis is with us, connecting from Paris. Oh my God. So what are the questions that we have? I've got a question if I can go first. Of course. Thank you. So in the Ikigai the part, how, do you have any tip to find what you are great at? Um, look at anything, Erica, that you do with no effort and you enjoy and time go by really fast. 
So maybe like you love, I don't know, editing PowerPoints. So when you start editing, you just click and you move the images and you build it really pretty and there's no effort. And then your friends just go, wow, your slides are so pretty. You're like, really? So all of those moments where you've done with no effort, time evaporated and other people have complimented you and you kind of thought they were crazy for compliments. You're just like, but you don't know how to design a PowerPoint. You don't know how to bake a cupcake. You don't know how to drive from one side of town to another. You don't know how to play an instrument. There's many things that we do. And this is it's a very good question that you're asking, Erica, because I think when we went to school, we would do subjects. And whatever we were really bad at, we would get like, our parents would be called into the school going, oh, your kids need to get better at this. But life is not about getting better at the things you do badly. Life is about you doing more of the things that you do really well. So just think about, okay, so today is Wednesday. What happened today that you had no effort in doing? Were you, I don't know, you spoke to your family and you solved your problem back home. You coded an Excel spreadsheet. You made really pretty, I don't know, you edited some photos that you took on the weekend and you posted on Instagram and you created, I don't know, an Instagram reel with the right song and 20,000 people saw it. It could be anything small. It doesn't need to be an off. And I mean, just editing a video on your phone. Like you could be, like I've been seeing in Australia, high, the high school kids making $19,000 per post in high school. These are underage kids. But they figured out how to edit really quickly, put the song and use the right caption to make it go viral. So we all do a lot of things really well. But the thing is that we kind of, our brains are so negative. I think it's because our brains have been trained to run from the lion and the fire from the past. We coded to always be on survival mode for negative things, but it shouldn't be like that. So just think about things that, I don't know, today or in the last week or in the last month, that you did maybe, I don't know, like I went to a couple of places on the weekend that was so much fun. And I'm like, wow, like every time I post on Instagram, people ask me like, what restaurant is that? And how did you find this place? How long does it take? I'm like, maybe I should just write like a travel blog because I'm traveling all day long, even when we're in lockdown. Like I find any excuse to like connect people and spaces and experiences. And that would be no effort for me. But for other people, like making a social media post is like, oh my God, like it's like, you know, the they're suffering the whole day because they need to make a social media post for the company. So go on Fiverr.com, pay $5 and get someone else to do it. Like our accountants, they're amazing, our accountants. And I always say, oh, thank you so much for existing because I'm dyslexic. So I can't do accounting. I'm very good at financial strategy, but data entry, looking at invoices, because I'm dyslexic and my brain is so busy, I don't enjoy doing little things. I like doing really big chaotic things. So if you really like, I don't know, playing the piano, great. Because if you play an instrument, you most likely don't see time going by. If I put you in front of a piano, if you're ready to go to playing piano, I'll kind of go like, Erica, can you stop playing the piano? It's time for us to have lunch. You can start teaching that. You can go on Instagram, post some little tips, record some classes and share with people. Then let them book you for $50. And you could do five clients a day. Meanwhile, you study. Meanwhile, you do something else. And you've got money coming in through subscription or personalized classes. So yes, so just think about things that you really enjoy doing, the time evaporates and everybody else is complimenting you, but you think they're crazy for complimenting you. That's more li most likely your Ikigai. And to link it back to a problem of the world, everything is a problem, everything. You've got glasses on, it's a problem. Without glasses, you won't be able to see, but you've got really stylish glasses which is also a problem because it's not easy to find the right glasses for you that are stylish. So everything is a problem. The paint in your wall is a problem because if you move into a house and the walls don't look clean, you're not going to rent it or you won't feel comfortable. And if you've got a beautifully prepped, painted room, the light bulb, everything. So yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Who else has questions? Kelly, Lena, Valeria, do you have any questions? Where are you logging in, Valeria? What's your background? I'm Russian, actually. Oh, but... wow. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So, Valeria, what are you doing at the moment? Are you studying? Are you working? Are you setting up a business? 
I'm working full time and I'm also starting business. Um, yeah. It's actually a Peruvian restaurant. I shared my Instagram link. Yeah. Um, I will follow you. What's your Instagram? Let me just yeah. get it here. Yeah, it was the first message where you see me. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, support. Okay, Instagram, amazing. Let me just save it here. So tell us more about this proven. So you're starting this proven restaurant. Yeah, so we actually, yeah, we're opening our restaurant, but you know, it's very difficult times right now. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's you know, hard to navigate as well in industry since um yeah i have um experience in business but not in restaurant business so it's a lot of that's okay that can be a good problem yeah. because if you're just a chef who's really good at cooking and you just all day focus on the ingredients cooking you're not managing your staff you're not managing your sales you're not managing the promotion so it's good to look at from an outside perspective. Like I own Academy of Spinners and I'm not a teacher. I've never taught a class. I've never studied education, but I've always been an entrepreneur and I have a community and I realized the problems we had and we solved it as a global community. So Valeria, tell me more about this restaurant. Why did you decide to start a restaurant? Are you a chef? Why is it Peruvian? Where are you locating the restaurant? What is your business model and the revenue model? Let's go, can I use your business as an example? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, so the first question was why we started. So I'm not actually a um, chef. My partner, he is Peruvian. He's from Peru. And so we started with just the um, idea that we want to, you know, do something together and, you know, like start a business. And um, I had experience in entrepreneurship and I started marketing. So and I really love doing it. I love doing marketing and you know being creative yeah and he was he was good at cooking <laughs> I mean he is still um yeah and then we started just um like you said um actually finding kitchens in some other places and just trying to do pop-ups so we're still currently currently doing pop-ups in Sydney just like one day a week but yeah it, it actually we learn a lot from them so that was uh, actually great idea if anyone wants to start like bakery or cafe you probably should go and try to find first like test your waters before you actually go into this and put all your money in it and yeah we learn it hard way yeah, because what sort of peruvian food are you doing in the pop-ups so it's peruvian it's south american so they have you know like um different types of cuisine that is actually um not present in australia such as anticultures i don't know if anyone you know uh, from latin <laughs> countries they probably know this ceviche you know all of this stuff so ceviche would be the most popular because it's across all of the latin countries yeah and i guess it's it's also familiar to australian um you know um to australians because ceviche is something that people actually can recognize but we, we we started because we want to introduce this cuisine to Australians as well because not many people can travel now as well and that's that's the way we want actually allow people to travel and you know try something new and educate themselves about different food through different food and we also do um live performance so with that live performance, so yeah, we like um, found, you know, a band of singers who come into our venue and they play music, like traditional Peruvian music for people. Yeah. yeah. When we look at the Peruvian food, there's many things you can do. You can have pop-ups, which gives you full flexibility. So you can follow music festivals around Australia. You can choose to go on holidays whenever you want, but you can move whenever. You can live in a caravan and just have them around. You can have Peruvians for birthday parties. You can have Peruvians for catering. You could do a partnership with a local hotel where they have Peruvian nibbles on a Tuesday night and you bring in the bands and you've got that as an ongoing income. You mm -hmm. can choose to be a Peruvian cafe in the morning and your evenings are free because you might want to go for a run every day in the evening, but you might mm -hmm. also want to surf in the morning and just run the evening. And this is what I was talking to you guys about is understanding what is the problem you're solving? Food we need to eat. But do I want fancy fine dining Peruvian? Do I want takeaway Peruvian? They're all, I need to eat food in a music festival. And normally it's got really horrible, greasy things. So if I can have a ceviche 
oh my God, people pay $30 for ceviche instead of paying $5 for, I don't know, a hot dog. Mm. So it's understanding how do you want to operate your business according to your lifestyle, your capacity, thinking big, start small. And something like a pop-up, we've got students that are camps for nurse. I've seen students making $25,000 on a weekend on pop-ups. So you could work one weekend of the month and the rest, you're free to set up another business, sleep, exercise, study, anything. So it's yeah. about the focus for that one weekend, you're going to be exhausted and you're going to have to call all of your best friends and hire all of them to work for that weekend. And there's nothing right or wrong with one or the other, but it's about you going, do you want every Australian to try ceviche? Do you want to be a franchise proven restaurant? Do you want to have the flexibility that you guys can go to Russia for three months of the year and you don't need to work or you're going to take everything over there and do pop-ups over there? Do mm. you want to train other people so you can be many pop-ups throughout the day and maybe they pay you 15% of what they earn because they're using your name, your logistic, your marketing and so forth. So it's very important. And you can have a combination of all of this. I always say have at least three business models and, uh, and three revenue models. And we're going to be talking about that in some other webinars. So guys, please, I know that you guys signed up through Eventbrite. Go back to the Eventbrite page and look at the next ones. We've got so many topics about entrepreneurship, social entrepreneurship, business model, revenue model. We're going to be teaching you guys all of these cool things that are super important. And we're going to be looking at different perspectives. So awesome work. And Valeria, what is your biggest challenge? What can I help you with right now? Uh, my biggest challenge? I think you actually gave me already like great ideas, you know, in terms of developing our business model that's what's probably like biggest challenge so yeah thank you it was you're it was welcome. amazing webinar you're I, I learned a lot oh you're welcome um just go and google and literally type business model and revenue models and they'll show up like 50 of each and then just go how can i combine two or three of them and mm -hmm. if you want the consul of peru here in sydney she's one of my best friends and she's always organizing it events. It was an hour pop-up as well. <laughs> ah, really? And Eliana, that's beautiful. So yeah, so work with her because she's every time she sees a new proven business, her heart explodes of pride. So contact her. She's on Instagram. She's on LinkedIn. Send her a message. Figure out when her birthday, or actually her birthday was two weeks ago. Send her something for her birthday and tell her, when are you next doing something? Can we cook at your house or can we cook at your office? She will support you guys. And then any proven that arrives that needs a job, she's going to link them to you guys. When they're hungry and they're homesick, she's going to link them to you guys. And she will support you guys forever. She comes to a lot of our events face-to-face -face at Accounts Finners as well. So yes, so leaders, world leaders are here to support. And the new proven ambassador arrived on Wednesday last week in Australia. So I'm going to Canberra tomorrow. So I'll be meeting with them. So Yeah. So I should be there for a week. At some stage, I'll be meeting the new ambassador. So I, I will mention you guys as well because they, their success is your success. The more you succeed, the more they succeed because they exist to create opportunities for you guys. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Lovely meeting you, lady. And thank you for sharing your story and your business. Lovely. Honest thank you. to meet you. And then I've got here Kelly as well asking us for the email. I will put my email here. I've already mentioned a couple of times. I'll put it here as well. Let me know what you guys want. Um, -na 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 -na. okay, so who else do we have here? What is your email? Okay, everybody wants the email. I'll go and just put the email in. Lena from Colombia, what do you think are the keys to become a social entrepreneur? Oh, um, I can do a, I can do a webinar just in social entrepreneurship. So what I was speaking to you guys about the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, that's the goal of social entrepreneurship. It's collaborating so we as a global community can sort those problems in alignment with the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So definitely focus on that. Send me a message. Lena, we've got some courses on social entrepreneurship, but also on YouTube, we've got some free masterclass that we recorded and we've kept it there. So you can send us a message, we can send you a link, or if you go on YouTube or go into our website, you'll be able to find it as well. Betsy said, thank you so much. You're welcome, Betsy. Um, top tools to be an entrepreneur. Very good question, Lena. We've got some webinars on productivity, but my top tools for entrepreneurship, one, number one is having a calendar. I love Google Calendar. Color code it, stick everything in there and make sure that you're putting everything that you need. Marketing for a few hours a day, finance, human resources, strategy. So definitely Google Calendar. 
Trello is a very, very, very good one for you to manage your projects, keep things on track and just have a centralized place. Super important. Another tool that I love is the finance tool called Zero. So Australia has many awesome tools for managing finance, but I find Zero it's just visually, you don't have to have a finance background to be using it. That's another great one. As an entrepreneur, I can't live without WhatsApp because it connects me to the whole world. It's super, super, super powerful. And I'd say the fifth tool, I would, in my case, I would say Instagram. Because right now around the world, 72% of purchases are influenced by Instagram. Yes, Facebook is powerful. Yes, TikTok is powerful. But 72% of the things that get sold in the world are influenced. So if you see someone with, I don't know, a jacket with this pattern on Instagram, you might not connect. But when you walk into the store and you see this pattern, you'll be like, hmm, that's the new fashion style. And then maybe you'll buy it and your friend that doesn't have Instagram will then buy the same thing because they've seen you using it. So Instagram is creating this huge disruption when it comes to e-commerce and e-commerce and lifestyle. So it's really influential. So I would say these are the top five that I use the most. Very good question. Um, so if you guys want supporting tools, send me an email. Angie um, from our team did a toolkit on the top 15 tools for you to run your e-commerce. So send us an email and we'll send that to you. And it's got all of the tools and they're all free tools for you guys to manage your e-commerce. So you'll get not buy for 15. Cool, Erica. Awesome. Oh, guys and girls. Amazing seeing you guys. Thanks for those of you guys that participated. Ask questions. And I'll see you guys next week at our next webinar. Um, for those of you guys that aren't watching live, please connect with us whenever you want. We're here to help you guys succeed. Big hugs, lots of love, and I'll see you guys in our next session or on YouTube or on Instagram, LinkedIn, everywhere. Big hugs, see you.